for this part, we consider the operation of undoing raising to a power. What that'll mean, we're going to want to solve equations where the unknown is an exponent. Now, the language for this, okay, these exponents that we solve for are called logarithms. Okay, so that's a long, unfamiliar word, but if you're trying to think of what a logarithm is actually doing, the key word is it's just another way of saying exponent. Now, let's first consider an illustrative example. So let's suppose, okay, at the beginning, or t equals zero, we have one dollar. The rule, as I go from one day to the next, we're gonna double the amount from the day before, and we wanna know how soon before we pass $1,000. Well, what do we do? At t equals zero, okay, so day zero, we have one dollar. And as we go on, we're going to just keep doubling. So I'll have 2, 4, 8, 16, 32, 64, 128, 256, 512, and then 1,024 when we get to day 10. So it'll take 10 days to get more than $1,000. Now note, what if we change this up? Say we were talking about a million or a billion or a trillion. Probably we don't want to go through all this work of a table. Is there a quicker way or more direct way to get to our answer? So first thing we should do is try to rewrite what we're doing as an equation. So what are we doing here? I'm starting with a 1. I'm going to multiply by 2 repeatedly. And you'll note the number of 2s is just going to be the same as the time period. So for instance, if I take day 4, well, we're going to have 16, which is 2 to the 4. Day 5, we'll have 32, which is 2 to the 5. So on day t, we'll have 2 to the t. With that, I could just rewrite our problem as find t such that 2 to the t is equal to 1,000. Then once we have that, we can round it up if we need to. So the question is, well, how do you access that t up in the exponent? That's going to take a couple of videos. So the things we'll need to focus on. First, we're going to have to focus on language. So that's going to be key to this. There is a dictionary step where I could pass from this logarithm notation to regular just raising things to a power. And we like to go back and forth between the two. Then there's going to be the business of mechanics and computation, which is once you're good with the language, how do you get numbers out of it? How do we use technology to solve logarithm problems? So to start, we have the language part. Okay, so the dictionary, okay, and this is something, whenever you're working with logarithms, you probably wanna put it somewhere on your page. For testing, this is something that definitely goes on a no card. What do we have? So on one side, I have an equation with an exponent. So here we have base, raised to an exponent, that's gonna give us an answer. If we're working with logarithms, we take these parts and just rearrange and write in the form, the logarithm to the base B of our answer A, okay, what came out, is gonna produce an exponent E. And so the question I'm trying to ask here is, if I've got B, what exponent do I raise it to to get to the answer A? We're going to need to know how to go from one side to the other and back. Now, let's do some examples where we get used to the language. So we're not going to try to solve anything just yet, but we just want to be able to go back and forth in the dictionary. So let's start with, okay, we have log to the base three of nine equal to two. So here, there's no unknowns to solve for. We just wanna write the language in either form. What do we do here? We consult, I need my base, my answer, my exponent. So I'll, I'll peel those off. B is three, A is nine, the exponent's of two. We look at the other side to rewrite an exponent form, and so I'm gonna get three squared equal to nine. And that's exactly what this says. If I have base three, 
What power do we go to to get to 9? Well, that's going to be the 2 that's coming out. So that's recording the exponent. Next, let's try. Okay, so log to the base 5 of 625 equal to x. So there's an unknown here, but we're mostly interested in just pushing the symbols around. I look for our b, our a, and our e. So b is 5, a is 625, e is equal to x. We rewrite an exponent form as 5 to the x is equal to 625. And then if you want to try to solve it, well, you can multiply powers of 5 up to get to 625. So the answer here would be a 4. One more. Let's make the base the unknown. So I'm going to have log to the base x. 64 is equal to 3. We look for our b, our a, and our e. So we'll have b is x, a is 64, e is 3. We rewrite next exponent form, we'll get x cubed equal to 64. And then again here, if you think for a little bit, you'll see that the x is going to be a 4. Now, how about the other direction? Let's try. I have 3 to the 4 equal to 81. That's a true statement. I want to write it in logarithmic form. So we peel off our b, our a, and our e. The base is 3. The exponent's a 4. The answer is an 81. We have log to the base 3 on the answer, which is 81. The exponent, so that's going to be equal to 4. And then this is the same as writing this. Finally, Let's take our problem from before. I have 2 to the t equal to a 1,000. We peel off the b, the a, and the e, and rewrite. And that's going to give us t equal to log over the base 2 of 1,000. Note, I haven't told you how to turn this into a number, say, with decimals. That's going to be in the next video. And this is something we'll be able to do with functions on the calculator. Now, let's compute some logarithms in simple cases. Here, we're going to be able to identify the exponents when we go to exponent form. For instance, if I have log to the base 5 of 25, okay, what we do, I want to use the dictionary, so we're going to need a variable for the exponent. I'll call that e. We translate. So the base is 5, the answer is 25. We can rewrite as 5 to the e equals 25. And we know the exponent in this case is going to be 2. So the log to the base 5 of 25 equals 2. Note the log here, what's it giving us? It's giving us the exponent. Let's try log to the base 16 of 4. Again, we'll just set this equal to the variable e. We translate, so the base is 16, the answer is 4. In exponent form, we have 16 to the e equal to 4. Okay, well, I know the relation between 16 and 4, we're taking the square root. And we've seen before, for square root, we use exponent 1 half. So the log of the base 16 of 4 is equal to 1 half. The 1 half is the exponent. One more. If I take, say, log to the base 2 of 1 half, Again, we just set it equal to the variable e. We translate. Okay, so here the base is 2. The answer is a 1 half. We go to exponent form. So I'll have 2 to the e equal to a 1 half. To get a power or an exponent in the picture, note, well, what do I do with 1 half to match to a 2? I can move the 2 across the bar, and then we pick up a minus 1. Now, this is 2 to the e equal to 2 to the minus 1. Okay, we drop the denominator 1. And matching the exponents, we have e equal to a minus 1 in this case. Okay, and so we see logarithms can be negative because exponents can be negative. Now, we're slowly going to accumulate a list of rules for logarithms. Okay, some that we'll want handy for a lot of things we do. First, if we take logarithm to the base b of b itself, you get a 1. If you use the dictionary, that's just saying if I take b to the 1 power, then that's just equal to b. 
Okay, that's um, straightforward. And likewise, if we take log to the base b of 1, doesn't matter what b is, 0 always comes out of this. And again, that's just rewriting in exponent form as b to the 0 equals 1. For our next two rules, we have cancellation laws. The idea here, raising to a power and taking logarithms to the same base cancel each other out. So the way this works, if I have log to the base b of b to the e, then we can think of this as the b's cancel, the log goes away, and I'm left with the e. In the other direction, if I take b raised to the log of the base b of a, again, the b's cancel, the log goes away, I'm left with the answer on the inside of the log, so we're gonna get an a. Now, these may seem not intuitive, but these are purely language tricks. It's almost not even math. So all we're gonna do is take the dictionary and just read it off in two different ways. For instance, what's this? Well, what's the logarithm to the base b of b to the e? I want to find the exponent so that when I put it over b, the answer b to the e comes out. What do you raise b to to get to b to the e? Well, that's just going to be exponent of e. On the other hand, let's take a look at what log to the base b of a is. Well, this is going to be the exponent so that when I put it on top of b, a comes out. Well, what are we doing here? We're taking this exponent, putting it on top of b, a has to come out. And so that's what we wind up with. Note, kind of non-intuitive, so good idea to put on a note card for testing situations. Now, let's see how we use this in practice. So if I have log the base 5 is 625 from before, what I can do now, rather than set this equal to e and solve, I'll just write 625 as 5 to the fourth power, the 5's cancel, and I'm left with a 4. If we want to check, I take the base, the 5, raise it to the exponent, the 4, 5 to the 4, 625, the answer. And so that checks out. Let's try log the base 5 of the square root of 5. Okay, we could set this equal to e and translate, but now all I need to do is write the square root of 5 as 5 to the 1 half. We have log the base 5 of 5 to the 1 half. The fives match, the log goes away, and I'm just left with a one half. Finally, let's try log the base two of one half. Now, I don't have two to a power in here, but I can get it if we go with negative exponents. So this is log the base two of two to the minus one. The twos match, the log goes away, and I'm left with a minus one. If I want to check, well, 2 to the minus 1, what do we do? We draw a bar, and we flip it over, and so we have 2 to the minus 1 is a 1 half, as promised. And that checks our work. Finally, we finish this part with special notation. So here, we're going to have functions on the calculator that are going to get us the numbers when we can't exponent cleanly. Now, for here, if we just have log of x with no base, that's going to mean base 10. If we have ln with an x in parentheses, the language for that is natural logarithm, then the base is going to be assumed to be e, which e is a special number roughly 2.71828, and then that goes on forever. So if there's no base, base 10. If we have ln with x in parentheses, that means natural log of x, or base e. Now, with that said, if we see log x out in the wild, we still need to be careful. Some computer languages use this for natural log. Other countries use this for natural log, okay, outside of the US. Other disciplines can use this for natural log. Just have to be aware of the context. So, careful with that. Now, for examples, if I have log of 1,000, okay, we're assuming that this is base 10. 1,000 is exponent 3. So, we take 
the tens, they cancel, the log goes away, and I'm left with the exponent of three. For what with natural log? I have natural log of e, so here this is just log of the base e. If it's on e itself, we can go in two directions. We had the rule from before, if I have a log of a, to a base on a base, it just goes to one. Or we could think of this as being e to the one, the e's cancel, the log goes away, and we're left with the one. And we see that our answers, okay, either method goes to the same place.